Good morning and welcome home, Ireton First. Good to have you all with us this morning. We're going to invite you to stand and join us as we sing our anthem for this month, Cares Chorus. Chris? pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, acknowledging that you are the source of all goodness and grace. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together as a community of believers and worship you in spirit and in truth. Speak to us now through your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let it guide our footsteps this morning so that we may follow you more closely. And may your Holy Spirit move among us, stirring up our faith, renewing our commitment to you. May you be honored and glorified in all that we do. May our praise and adoration be pleasing to you, and may our lives reflect the love and grace we have found in you. And we offer this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We invite you to remain standing as we continue our hymn singing this morning. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Stress. 
distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempest's lair by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Judy. Y'all may be seated. you watching online this morning. I hope you're feeling blessed and ready to worship boldly this morning. I'm kind of keeping up with you here on the phone. So if you're watching online this morning, say good morning and say praise the Lord. Okay, I'm, I'm watching. So uh, good morning, praise the Lord. Pretty simple. Do that. We appreciate y'all being here this morning. Take a second and check in if you would. We have some connect cards in your worship guide you can fill out. Or you can stand, scan that QR code on the front of the worship guide and do it electronically. And that takes you to a Google form that has everything to do with Ironton First. And you can uh, fill that out and send that to me. It comes in uh, privately to me only. And so we hope you'll check in with us this morning. Uh, you can use Linktree, of course, to do that as well. And it's just a great way to connect with us. A few announcements to share with you as I... I uh, promised last week there'll be a whole lot more announcements about Holy Week, and so I've got some of that to go over here in just a minute. But first of all, just a reminder to join us this Wednesday night for our Bible Connection at 6.30. We are studying the Book of Romans. It's been a great study, and we hope you all will join us. Uh, you can find us out on the Facebook page and also on Linktree. And then at 7.30, we start our Q&A with the pastor where we're going to talk about this sermon this morning, dig a little deeper, and talk about any questions that you might have. And again, that's at 7.30. That's also out on Linktree and on Facebook. Uh, and speaking of that, there's a great new way for you to join us on Wednesday nights via Linktree. So if you have not been able to set that up on your computer or on your phones, and you would like me to help you with it, just bring me your laptop or bring me your phone. I will get you all set up so that within, uh, within two clicks, <clears throat> you can be right in the midst of our Bible study or right in the middle of our Q&A. Uh, I would love it if Bible study had every single one of you with us on Wednesday night. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be incredible if every one of you were in the middle of Bible study and you never had to leave the comfort of your sofa? How awesome is that? And so I hope you'll join us Wednesday nights at 6.30 on Linktree. I'll help you do it. I'll help you get set up on your computer or your phone. And where you can just get to that, just click, click, and you're there. And we'd love to have you as part of that, okay? <clears throat> and then moving on, uh, on Palm Sunday, the Bells of Bethlehem are performing. That's all of our little ones, like our kids, in case you didn't know that. They've been practicing for several weeks, and they're going to be doing a special uh, bell music presentation and sharing the good news uh, in that capacity. So it's a good time for you to invite others to church to come with you, uh, your friends, your neighbors, your aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas. It's a good time for us to be uh, here in this church. And so we'll have a lot of guests with us that day. And so I hope all of you will uh, uh, just be ready to be uh, exuberant in your hospitality to everyone who will come and be with us on Palm Sunday. And then mark your calendars for the happenings of Holy Week. We will have a Monday, Thursday service here at the church. That's April 6th at 630. That service will last about a half hour, 45 minutes. And so we hope you'll come uh, and be with us. We'll, we'll be sharing a Holy Communion together on that night, okay? So that's Holy Thursday. Uh, then on fr Good Friday, the uh, Ministerial Association will be putting together and getting together for lunch again. Uh, so it'll be a Good Friday luncheon here at the church at noon. And we'll be doing, again, the seven sayings uh, of the cross. We've got seven brand new speakers to share with us from the area. And so they'll be doing that. There'll be a lunch and a time there for us to worship together. And then that evening, we are planning a Good Friday prayer walk and worship service. There'll be people from around the community, and you can join them if you'd like. They'll be meeting at various places around the community and then walking to this church 
and praying for our community and for revival to break out. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll be joining together to do a worship service. We'll have uh, three speakers that will be sharing the, the word. And then we're going to be looking for the audience as well to participate. And uh, just to, uh, to kind of share and praises and, and prayer concerns. And to have some dialogue about how we can see revival in our community. And we'll follow all of that up and end the service with a candlelight service as we pray for Ironton and our surrounding communities. And so we hope you'll be a part of our Good Friday uh, service that, that evening, and uh, we'll be putting more announcements of that out as we finalize those plans about what stations you could join and walk in from and so on. And of course, Easter Sunday coming up April 9th, always a huge day in the life of the church. Uh, anytime I'm doing my sermon planning for the first half of the year, I start there. Everything else spins out of Easter. And so uh, we will be having our Easter service here uh, Sunday morning. Again, there'll be a lot of guests, I'm sure. We want you to invite your friends and neighbors and loved ones to be here. In addition to that, as I talked a few weeks ago in my previous sermon series, we're going to do Membership Sunday. If you would like to become a, an official member of this church, please let me know. And we'll be taking in new members uh, to the church Easter Sunday. It's a great day, easy day for you to remember, right? Easter Sunday, we'll be doing Membership Sunday here at the church. And so if you're interested in becoming a member of this local assembly, please let me know so we can prepare uh, everything for that and have everything ready uh, for that Sunday. So just let me know about that, okay? And then on June 4th, uh, we're going to have a very special offering Sunday called A Place Called Home Offering. This is a special miracle offering that we're taking up to pay the cost of disaffiliation from our denomination. And we hope to raise $67,000 to meet the requirements uh, for separating so that we don't have to deplete our savings. Um, this church has been a home to many of you for many decades, and we want to keep it that way by owning our properties without a trust clause. And so your generosity is helping us keep this church your home for many years to come. Monies have already been pledged to help, and I hope that you will help us uh, even more with that. I think we have around 2,500 bucks has been donated already. And so we celebrate that generosity. Uh, and I'm praying for a miracle outpouring of generosity on June 4th. To help you with that, we now have a, a, a place on Tithely that you can actually go to. We have a category called Disaffiliation Fund. And you can give to that, or you can wait till June 4th and give it all at one time. But we've asked all of you to pray about adding 10% of your offering to your offering so that we might use that toward the disaffiliation fund. And so again, just as an example, if you give $100 a month, uh, could, could you add $10 to that to, to go toward the disaffiliation fund? And let us know that that's where you want that to go. Or again, save it all up and bring it in June 4th, and we'll just see that as a miracle offering, okay? All right, uh, we have a few extra um, Life Together t-shirts. Those are in the church uh, office. They're $15 a piece. And the money that we receive from that will go as seed money uh, for our Life Together ministry initiative where we're striving for every person to be in ministry. And along that line, the women have just have kicked it off big time. Y'all always do. The ladies are always way ahead of us, okay? But the women's project group, they, they, they were making Easter gift bags and, uh, bags and sending cards to the people that are on the Because We Care list. And so we have on the back table, right back here, right, Judy? Yeah. Right back here. Those of you over online, it's over here. It's over, over there as the exit. Uh, but we have a lot of cards out there that we invite you to go and sign and just leave a word of love and encouragement on those cards, if you would, before you leave this morning, okay? Again, just ladies are doing a fantastic job um, just putting that together, always leading the way and showing us the way, okay? So we praise God for that. Uh, also, we want you to join us for refreshments after the services today, if you, especially if you're a guest with us today. Uh, stick around, and let's just share some, some company and some time together, all right? Uh, any other announcements that I forgot or didn't know about? Can we show that? Okay, I, yeah, I thought we'd slide. Yeah, there's our ladies. They were busy at work yesterday. So let's show them some love. So our lady's busy at work showing us how to have life together. And that's wonderful. We thank you for that. 
All right, it's time, uh, time of the morning where we like to, to uh, worship the Lord in our giving. If you're watching online, there's a, a link there. Again, it's going to take you to Linktree, and you can uh, give online, either a, a single gift or a recurring gift. You can kind of set that up as well. Uh, or you can mail it to the church. You can do that too, 101 North 5th Street here in Ironton, uh, or drop it off at the office if you're out there online. But if you're in person, we'd like for you to worship with us this morning as our ushers come. Uh, may you give as God has laid on your heart. I invite you to stand if you're able and join us as we sing our doxology this morning. Generous God, you tenderly care for each person you have created. You miraculously restore people to health and shine light into the lives of those who are discouraged. Guide us so that we will not regard others according to outward appearances, but seek to find your love in their hearts. We dedicate our offerings and ourselves to contribute to the work of your kingdom on earth until Christ returns in glory. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to dismiss the kids to Children's Church. Eric had to work today, and Tabitha is out of town, so we're going to go ahead and dismiss them. I know they're doing their final practices of ringing those bells. And so, kids, if you want to just follow Miss Patty on back. All right, as we get ready to go into our time of breakthrough celebrations, again, this is an opportunity for you just to praise the Lord. If you've got a joy in your heart of something you want to celebrate, or maybe you just want to thank God uh, for being in your life, uh, this is an opportunity for you to do that. So who's got a breakthrough celebration? Yes, June? <laughs> Amen. Others. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. I'm going to explain the whole thing. Okay. But I wanted to get all the attention, so I'm going to let letting you all have your shot first. Who else has a blessing or a praise? Yes. I'm glad to be back. I've had a terrible time with this Jordan Joe. I just hate to hear that anyone has to feel for it. If it's that important to self, if it's that important to self, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been faithful online and uh, listening to the services, and I'm very glad about that. Amen. I'm glad we have it too, yes. 
And Connie, your heart, I, I, I was praying for you because I had the most severe back. It's like the worst seasickness you could ever go through. It's terrible. So good to have you back with us. Glad you're back on the mend. Others. Yes, Kathy. Yes, we made it to spring. Amen. <laughs> that doesn't mean it won't still snow on us, but we made it to spring. Anyone else? Yes. Amen, amen. Thank you, ladies, again, for the We Care bags that you're putting together. Again, please, please stop and just sign a little note of encouragement on those cards as we take those out to our shut-ins and just be a blessing to them. But yes, it's a blessing to you as well. So anyone else? Well, as Leona mentioned, um, the Women's Project Group, they have started, uh, actually restarted, Wanda Spears Project, Wanda's Project, and what they're doing and what this is all about, and I wanted to highlight this, I wanted to spend some time focused on this this morning, is they are collecting stuffed animals for children who find themselves in protective custody. And uh, to start this project, uh, Kathy Simmering and her sister uh, have donated these handmade dolls, and they are beautiful. If you have not had a chance to look at them, I want to encourage you to come up after service and take a look. I mean, the, the quilts are beautiful. The dolls are beautiful. I mean, my goodness. I saw the picture yesterday, but seeing them in person, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> but what we have is we have 44 dolls and 27 doll blankets. We have some stuffed animals and just all of this is for children that have been taken into protective custody and sometimes it's just that little demonstration of love that makes all the difference. Amen? So thank you so much, those of you who have donated and, and put that together. And let's keep that going. And I think in, in memory of Wanda Spears, I think it's, it's truly a blessing. Truly a blessing. And so um, in, in a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer a prayer of blessing on these. You don't need to come forward, but just put your hands toward the altar, and I'll go right into our, my pastoral prayer, but I want to offer a prayer of blessing on these, that God would use them in a mighty way to just touch the lives of these kids who, for whatever reason, have been ripped from whatever they knew as home and put into protective custody, and they need our prayers. And they need to feel God's love. And what a wonderful way for us to do that. So, so let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts. Giving thanks for the opportunity to lift up Wanda's project before you. We are grateful for the heart of those that have handcrafted these dolls to provide comfort to children who are in protective custody and for their dedication to making a difference in the lives of these precious little ones. Lord, we pray that you would bless Wanda's project abundantly. May every stuffed animal and small doll blanket that is made and given bring joy and comfort to these children. And may they be reminded of your love and care for them, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. We ask that you would surround the children who receive these gifts with your protection. And that you would provide them with the care and support they need to thrive. May they feel your love and know that they are not alone. Loving God, we come before you today as a community of believers. 
seeking your guidance and direction in our lives. We confess that at times we have strayed from your path, and we've not always followed your ways as we should, but we know that you are for Lord, we desire to follow you more closely, to live in obedience to your will, and to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We pray that you would strengthen us and empower us by your Holy Spirit so that we may be faithful disciples of Christ in all that we do. Help us to seek your will in our daily lives, to trust in your promises, and to obey your commands. Give us the courage to follow you, even when the way is difficult and the call seems too high, and the world around us may be tempting us to go astray. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are struggling to follow you would be with them, comfort them, and guide them on the path of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We come before you today with heavy hearts, mindful of the many needs and concerns of our community. We, left, we lift up to you all those who are sick, asking for your healing touch upon their bodies and minds. We pray that you would give them strength and comfort during this difficult time and that they would feel your presence with them every moment of the day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also remember those who are sorrowful, grieving the loss of loved ones or facing other struggles in their lives. We pray that you would be a source of comfort and strength to them and that they would find peace in your loving embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift those who are in need whether it be financial, emotional, or spiritual, we ask that you would provide for them according to your riches and glory and that they would find hope and comfort in your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have wandered away from you or who are lost and searching for meaning and purpose in their lives. We ask that you would draw them back to yourself and that they would experience the joy and peace that comes from knowing you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Finally, Lord, we lift up to you all those who have private concerns and burdens on their hearts. We pray that you would meet them where they are and that they would know that you are with them, guiding and supporting them through every trial and tribulation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we thank you for your constant love and care for us, and we pray that you would continue to lead us in the way we should go. We thank you for the multitude of blessings we have shared with one another today. Lord, for the confidence and joy and hope we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks. And we share together our prayer of thanksgiving as we say in unison our breakthrough prayer. And all God's people said together, Lord, we put our trust and hope in you, Lead us today and every day, we remember your word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Thank you for loving us. We give you praise in the name of Jesus who died for our sins and rose again for our salvation. We pray all of this in accordance with the will of God and in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, again, a good morning to everybody and all of you watching online. I know especially a lot of you online, right now is about the time you turn your computer on. <laughs> and so you're always joining us when we get ready for the sermon because, you know, that's what you live for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, good to have you all with us. Uh, yesterday I had the privilege of speaking to uh, 
uh, a number of churches, uh, both online and in person in Athens. And uh, so thankful to uh, Richland UMC to, to host me and for the conference to invite me to be the keynote speaker on fresh uh, starts and new beginnings for churches. It's one of the things that you all have heard me talk about a lot, but they probably haven't heard me talk about that. And so hopefully we were a blessing to them, and, and it certainly was a joy to be there and to, to spend the day with them. And, uh, and to kind of hear from other speakers as well, as they kind of shared different things that were going on. It was pretty exciting to, to hear about all these new innovative things that people are doing. Um, but it was a great day. I came home, uh, uh, got home last night and uh, from that day, and, and uh, Joyce and I tried to settle down and relax a little bit, and I got up this morning, and, you know, we, and we got up early, and, you know, we're, and we're trying to work out every day, Judy. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Um, but you know what? If you want to get in shape, you got to do the hard work, you know? You, you, you got to pay the price for fitness. It's easy for me to sit on the sofa and just eat. There you go. I got an amen for that one. Easy to sit on the sofa and eat. Hard to get up early and exercise. And so I, I got this exercise program uh, that I downloaded my phone. And we did that for, I don't know, two or three days. And it was, it was, it was too hard. It was, uh, you know, I'm old. This was for someone who was like 20. I mean, one of the exercises, you would like stand on your hands and you would push your entire body. You're sitting on the floor. You push your entire body up off the floor and just on your hands and raise your, your legs up off the ground. I ain't got that kind of balance. What are they talking about? I have a hard time sitting in a chair and staying upright. It's too hard. But we tried. And I was sore yesterday really too sore to work out. So today, we got up early, and uh, uh, we tried the Silver Sneakers program. <laughs> That's where, yeah, I'm off camera. Is that, yeah. That's where, I can do that. I can sit in the chair and do crutches. How about that? Sit in this chair. So, okay, for this, for all y'all on, on lot. <laughs> yeah, or this. I can do that. I'd have to do it about a thousand times to lose any weight, but I can do that. There is a cost you have to pay to get in shape. Well, let me segue to another thing I want to tell you about. Back in 2000, Joyce and I bought a house when we moved back, when we moved from Colorado, moved back to Ohio. We bought this house, <clears throat> and the house was a 1925 catalog stick house that was of the arts and crafts era. How many of you remember that you used to be able to order your house out of a catalog? Yeah, see, some of you are experienced people. And, uh, and, and you know, you could, Montgomery Wards and Sears, they had, you could order a house on a catalog. And they would, they would come in a rail car, and you'd have, they'd have all the lumber, and it'd all be numbered. It was like, you know, a rector set, man. You'd put it all together, and you'd build the house. Well, that's what this house was. It's arts and crafts style. And as a one-time architecture student, I fell in love with the whole design of the house and the bones that we had to work with. Uh, but unfortunately, over the years, the previous owners had made a lot of changes to the house. The house no longer had 10-foot ceilings. They had put a drop ceiling in, like the, like the kind you see in an office building. You know, the little you know, two-by-four pan, you just drop. That's what, they, that's what they had in there. Um, the hardwood floors had been covered over with avocado green shag, sculptured shag carpet. Now, if you still have that in your house, I ain't judging. I'm just saying it wasn't arts and crafts style, okay? So y'all don't hate on me. I'm just saying it didn't fit the arts and crafts style. I guarantee you they did not have avocado green sculptured shag carpet in 1925. And so it just didn't fit the decor. The ornate wooden stair rail that came down the steps was gone. And in its place, they had put a wrought iron railing like you'd see on the front porch of somebody's house. In fact, out on the front porch, they had taken away the arts and crafts style columns on the front porch, and they put wrought iron on all of that, and some of that was rotted from rust. The original doors with the glass doorknobs, 
they had all been replaced with shutters all through the whole house. I forget how many pairs of, I mean, shutter doors, like, man, we had shutter, we sold them at, at, in a yard sale. Said, if you want a shutter door, we had shutters on all the windows and shutters on all the doors. And instead of plaster walls, we had brown paneling and wallpaper. That's what was on there. But we bought the house anyway, believing that we could restore it back to its original. Yeah, <laughs> I feel your pain. If you've ever remodeled a home, you know that there's always, always, always more work required than you initially thought. And it will always, always, always cost you more than you budgeted for. If you've ever seen the movie Money Pit, that was us. So we tore the drop ceiling out, and we found out that the plaster ceiling, much of it had fallen off. Now we know why they put in the plaster or the uh, drop ceiling. We ripped down a lot of the paneling and the wallpaper, and we found that was the case for the walls as well. You know, it had the old lath boards with the plaster over the top. So we started trying to repair some of that and realized that was too much work, so we finally ripped it all out. You could stand on one end of the house, look all the way through the house to the front of the house. All you had was two befores. There was a, we, we tore down the lath boards, everything, and we re-sheetrocked the entire house. And then we plastered over the wall or the floors. Took the carpet up, found these beautiful hardwood floors, except there was a few boards missing here and there. And this house, when it was originally built, it had, you remember the old floor furnaces? That you, you know, you'd stand on top of them, burn your feet, you know, you had to make sure you always wore shoes when you walked over there. They had taken that out and they just put plywood over it. And so we had to fix the floors and they were the old, Doug, uh, the old uh, yellow pine hardwood flooring and you can't find that. Go to lumber liquidators, I ain't got that. Fortunately, there was a place who milled that and I managed to get 100 square foot of that and fix it. Almost all of the original arts and crafts trim around the windows and the doors had been removed. There was one room that still had it, so I had a pattern. And so I hand milled all that trim work and remade it for the entire house. All the doors, all the windows, we put the original arts and crafts style trim work back up. We took out all the old knob and tube wiring. Y'all know about knob and tube wiring, right? All that had to come out, a brand new electrical system had to go in the whole house. We rebuilt the columns and the rails for the front porch to match 1925. We remodeled that house from front to back and top to bottom, literally. If we had known or realized the total cost of that remodel, we just might have changed our minds and done something else. But in the end, it was a beautifully restored arts and crafts style home once again, brought back to its original glory. And then we moved. <laughs> and we bought a building with a loft apartment that had been completely gutted. And, and why my wife is still married to me, I do not know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the new place, it had no floor, Judy. I mean, I mean you can look downstairs into the kitchen. It was just like, you know, no floor. Just steel beams and a few concrete pads, and we had to re pour the concrete. All the flooring we put in, I bought a bunch of sheets of plywood, and we cut those down to five and three-quarter inches, half-inch plywood. Hand-painted every board. And it reattached, it put the subfloor down, reattached, made it look like old warehouse flooring. So it looks like an industrial loft like you'd see in New York City or someplace. It's gorgeous now. But boy, when we bought it, it wasn't. So our text today kind of leans into this thought process of what it means to follow Christ. You say, when you told all those stories and what in the world's this guy? It's coming. 
Luke chapter 14. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Our text is a challenging text, amen? Some of what Jesus says at times is hard. He's trying to weed out the riffraff. And it's meant to be hard. When Jesus is telling the crowds and us as we listen in, is that there's a cost of discipleship. The subtitle of our our series is Returning to the Straight and Narrow. And the straight and narrow is a hard road sometimes. I think it was Tina that said, you know, every now and then, I think you might like to hear something nice. And easy. But there's just one thing. We never, ever do nothing nice and easy. We always do it nice and rough. Well, the straight and narrow is nice, but it's also rough. Following Jesus requires us to give him our ultimate loyalty which always requires sacrifice. In the small amount of time I have this morning with you, I want to explore the cost of discipleship and what it means to fully commit ourselves to Christ. For those of you watching online, if I say something you like, just hit that little heart button. That's an electronic amen, okay? I'll watch this later. I'll be able to know if you did or not. First of all, giving to Jesus and giving him our ultimate loyalty means putting him before everything else. You know, I've been doing a lot of Old Testament study lately, and recently I, started, uh, I studied the first four of those commandments deal with how we are to love God and our relationship with him. In Deuteronomy 6.5, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. I just read that last week in my Bible study. Well, Jesus repeated that command in Matthew 22 when he was tested by an expert on the law, when asked what the greatest commandment was, he said this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. When God gave that command to the Israelites, hear me, this is important, because some, this, for some of you, this is the, the, the only thing you need to take away today. So hear this. When God gave this command to the Israelites, They were on their way to the promised land. I shared this with our staff and volunteers on Thursday. They're on their way to the, they're not there. They left Egypt and they're on their way to the promised land. But right then when they get this command, they're they're in the middle. They're somewhere in the middle. And they didn't have much. But God said, love me with everything you've got. Love me with everything you've got. Whatever you have in you is enough. And you might feel like your life is somewhere in the middle. Church, you all might feel like you're somewhere in the middle. Listen, we took a vote. What an easy vote. What was it even something that we unanimously agreed on? We took a vote, but we're not there yet. Hear me? July 1, out here. You know where we are right now? We're somewhere in the middle. We're not there yet. 
We're on the way. And God says, love me with everything you've got. It may not be much, but you do it anyway. Love me with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind. Give me everything you've got. Even if you don't think it's enough, you give it all. God wants to rule supremely in our lives, and he cannot do that if we have mixed alliances. When we let God have first priority in our lives, we are acknowledging his sovereignty and lordship over our lives. It is acknowledging that God is in control of everything. He is the source of all blessing. When we let God have first priority in our lives, we are setting our hearts on things above, not on things of this world. The things of this world are temporary, but God's kingdom is eternal. By placing God first, you are investing in things that will last forever, such as your relationship with God and our service to others and our witness to the world. When we let God have first priority in our lives, we are fulfilling the purpose for which we were created. You and I were created to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Charles Stanley said the greatest priority of our lives is to love God and glorify him in all we do. There's a cost to putting God first in your life. Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 8, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and he said this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves Take up their cross and follow me. Putting God first may mean giving up certain things in our lives that do not align with God's will for our life. And we must be prepared to sacrifice anything that hinders us from following Jesus. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews said. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight... And the sin, I didn't say weight of sin, every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Folks, sometimes we have to lay aside things that in and of themselves are not sinful, but they are a hindrance. They hinder the race that God has called us to run. Again, they're not sinful things. That is keeping you from doing what God is calling you to do. And we, if we put God first in our lives, it means you're going to lay some of that down. And we need to be prepared to surrender that and let God have first priority. Number two, I feel like preaching today, Chris. This might go a while. <laughs> I'm not planning on it, but you never know. Count the cost and make a deliberate decision. Count the cost. What will it cost you to follow Jesus? Well, first of all, it's going to cost you the toll sin leaves on your life. Because sin will take a toll on you. It may cost you either. It will cost you your selfishness. It will cost you your pride. Following Jesus is not something we can do half-heartedly. We must count the cost and make a deliberate decision to follow him. Jesus warned us not to look back once we put our hand to the plow. Luke chapter 9. We cannot serve God and follow him while still clinging to our old ways of life. Instead, we must deny ourselves, take up our cross daily, choosing to follow Jesus in every aspect of our lives. On Sunday morning, our group gets together. We've been studying Pilgrim's Progress. If you haven't read it, read it. If you haven't read it in a while, go read it again. But throughout the saga of journeying to the kingdom, Christian learns that he must let go of his old life and go on to this new one. And it's really hard. He has a lot of obstacles. A lot of things he's got to uh, uh, carry around and, and then unload. And a lot of people that he runs into, they're trying to... 
He's challenged all the way. But in the end, he finds that it was all worth it. Our Lord and Savior said this, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to be reconciled to God except through Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, Luke wrote this, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Following Christ is an intentional choice. Some of you listen today. You're, this is stirring your heart. You're thinking maybe today's the day I finally commit to Jesus, and I hope it is. But it's a, it's a personal choice. I can't make it for you. Mommy and Daddy can't make it for you. You have to make that choice. Noted pastor and theologian R.C. Sproul said this, it is, it is a deliberate choice to commit oneself to a new way of life. Pastor Greg Laurie said this, following Jesus isn't something you do half-heartedly or casually. It requires a deliberate decision to surrender your life to him. Following Christ takes a personal decision to, to accept him as Savior and Lord. And surrendering all to Christ is hard. Surrendering all to Christ is hard. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. Join me. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Point number three, the reward for following Jesus is worth the sacrifice. There were times when we were modeling our house, I know Joyce is going to appreciate this, that we, we looked at each other and we said, what were we thinking? <laughs> we still do that every now and then. <laughs> we, we always jump in a lot deeper than we think it is. What were we thinking? Now in the end, the house was beautiful and nostalgic. For some of you that have been following Christ faithfully for many years, there have been times that you, God was going to call me to do this. <laughs> I don't know that I'd have come this way. But you know what? I'm glad for the mystery in serving Jesus. You know, any God that you can figure out isn't God. Amen? I'm glad for the mystery because if I had known and knew what the next 40 plus years are going to look for me in, in, in serving Christ and following Christ, I'd have said no. Too hard. Just like that. No, it's hard. It's a hard road. There is joy and comfort and peace that comes as a result of following Jesus that I did not have when I walked in sin. There's also a promised blessing to all those willing to sacrifice their lives for Christ in service. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 10. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, that's resurrected living, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. And as I'm reading that, I'm thinking what June said earlier. Sometimes we, we might give up relationships in our family. Sometimes your family might hate on you a little bit because you're a Christian. But look at the family you've got. Praise God, look at the family you've got. Brothers and sisters in Christ that will pray for you, will lift you up, that will be there for you, that will write cards and put bags together for you, that will make little dolls that's going to bless children for you. Jesus gave us that promise that he would give us all those things if we would just follow him. 
When we make sacrifices to serve Jesus faithfully, he promises that those who do so will receive a hundredfold reward in this life and eternal life in the age to come. And that's a promise we can count on because you know why? God is a promise keeper. The Apostle Paul said, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Following Christ requires sacrifice and hard work, but the reward is worth it. Or for those of you that have put your faith in Christ, have you considered the cost? Truly following Jesus may cost you more than you thought, but the return on your investment is priceless. If you're listening to this message online or even those of you who are listening in person this morning, my prayer is that you will make that deliberate decision before it's too late. You don't have to be in a church building to get saved. It was October 3, 1977 that I knelt down in the living room of my apartment, repented of my sins, and put my faith in Christ. And if someone had told me that day the cost of following Christ, I probably would have changed my mind in the moment. But just like my house remodel, it was really hard work following Jesus. But looking back, oh, looking back, it was all worth it. And I hope that when I finally take my final breath in life, that by God's grace I can look back and say, it's been tough. It's been hard. I've not always been able to do the things I wanted to do, and I had to sacrifice some things to follow Jesus. But oh, it was worth it. It was worth it to follow Jesus all the way. Let me pray for us this morning. Savior and King, we come before you today with heavy hearts, mindful of those who are lost and struggling to follow you. We pray for those who are burdened with doubts and fears, who feel as though the journey of faith is too hard and they won't make it. Lord, we know that following you is not always easy. And that the road can be long and, and difficult. But we also know that with you all things are possible. You are the God who gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. You are the God who lifts us up and carries us through the storm. We pray for those who feel lost and alone, who are searching for meaning and purpose in their lives. And we ask that you reveal yourself to them in a powerful way that they would know without a doubt that you are with them, guiding and supporting them on the journey of faith. Lord, we pray that you would give them the courage to take the first step, to trust in your promises and to walk by faith, not by sight. We ask that you would surround them with a community of believers who will love and support them and help them to grow in their relationship with you. Finally, Lord, we pray that you would fill them with your peace and joy that they would experience the abundant life that comes from knowing you. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And this morning, if you've made a first-time decision for Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to go to that Connect card and check that box. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will encourage you in your, walks of, in your walk of faith. And if you recommitted to Jesus, there's a place for you to check. Today I recommitted my life to Christ. And we ask you to check that as well. I want to lift you up in prayer and pray for you as you follow Jesus. It's not always easy. In fact, a lot of times it's just flat out hard. But in the end, it's always worth it.
As you leave this time of worship with us, my prayer is that God's presence would follow you, heal you, and empower you to witness to the goodness and love of God everywhere you go. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless.